Hi, everybody. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. There's so much that I want to say. Um, I just want to thank everyone for showing up because you all are keeping me afloat right now. Your presence is buoying me and it's keeping me alive, really. I, I find these moments, uh, these times to be incredibly challenging as I'm sure most or all of you are feeling. And I find that our presence here to be such an amazing um, act of hope. So we don't know what it will be like when we can gather again to dance together in person. We don't know when that will be or what that will look like. And the fact that we're showing up here now to plan for that and to set the groundwork for that to be as just and inclusive and equitable and consensual as possible and to set the stage for broadening consent culture throughout all of CI internationally is it's so inspirational for me and so I just want to name that and yeah <laughs> so since it's the beginning of the symposium I decided to offer a few activities, three activities that will hopefully help ground us and set the stage for the rest of the, the practices that the other presenters will be offering. So what we'll be doing right now together is a solo journaling activity, a free write, and then moving into small breakout groups, uh, both of which will have a prompt that I'm going to share verbally and also share uh, in written form in the chat box. And then we're going to do a group visioning exercise that I'll share more about when we get there. So for five minutes on your own, with whatever writing implement you choose, whether it's a notebook and pencil or pen, or perhaps on your computer, or perhaps you just want to daydream <laughs> and just kind of reflect on this inside your own mind. And here is the the offer. I'm going to put this in the chat box in all caps just to differentiate it from all the other conversations. What brings you here to this symposium? What questions or concerns are up for you personally around consent and CI? And how are these questions or concerns being addressed or not in your home CI community? So these are some big questions and I'm only giving you five minutes, but I assume that you've already been doing reflecting on this if you're here. So just an opportunity to take five minutes to reflect in a more focused, organized way on these questions. What brings you here to this symposium? What questions or concerns are up for you personally around consent and CI? How are these questions or concerns being addressed or not in your home CI community? Whatever aspect of these questions feels interesting to you to address. And also keep in mind that while we will be using this writing as the springboard for our small group discussions, you're not obligated to read anything aloud to anyone. So this writing is really just for you. Okay, so finishing up with your writing, keeping in mind that it's probably just a beginning. This whole, this whole experience this weekend is really just a beginning. We're just, we're just starting together. So it's all to be continued. I'm going to offer you all another prompt in the chat that is going to be the springboard for your discussion and your small group. And then Vivek will, will set you all up in groups of three, keeping in mind that a, a few of you might end up in two, like a pair share, um, if somebody doesn't want to join. So what we're going to discuss in the small groups are the following. What issues around consent do you see happening in your home CI community? Identify some structural problems that contribute to these issues rather than attributing the issues to individuals' behaviors. So for example, you know, if you identify some, some kind of issue or concern that's troubling you about your home community, 
you might identify an individual who is enacting the, the harm or the behaviors that you feel are harmful, and it could be really easy to focus on that individual or individuals. And my ask is for you all to consider the structural issues that are contributing to the problem. So usually individuals' behaviors arise out of a system, out of a system that has rules and boundaries that or lack thereof that create conditions where individuals can behave a certain way. So I'm going to ask you to listen to each other without cross-talking and share from your own experience and make more space for those who have marginalized identities in your group. So if you I see or notice yourself as holding a more dominant identity than others, try to take a step back and listen more. And when I say no cross-talk, it doesn't mean you can't say, oh, I, I really identify with what you're saying or that resonates for me, but just to really focus on I statements and your own experience rather than statements that are that sound more like, oh, you should, or this is what I this is what I think about your your experience. Okay. So again, as a small group, you're going to discuss what issues around consent do you see happening in your home CI community and identify some structural problems that contribute to those issues. Again, this is just the beginning of a conversation. No expectations that you are going to come up with the solutions to all these issues in the 10 minute breakout. So just release yourself of any feeling of responsibility to figure things out. We're just opening up the conversation, okay? Hi, everyone. Um, just so you know, that was the first of many breakouts. So there will be lots of opportunities to mix and mingle with other folks around different questions and prompts. I hope that that was fruitful for you or enjoyable <laughs> and or enjoyable. The next and last thing we'll do in this session is a group visioning that I've done a bunch with people in person and have never done online. So I imagine that it's going to be a little bit clunky because uh, a bunch of individual people are going to be sharing out loud into the group and we'll be taking stack. People can raise their hands. So the premise of this group visioning is that we, it is the future. And we have collectively created a contact improvisation world for ourselves that is one that uh, really embraces consent culture. So just sit with that for a moment, that feeling, that future. We've done it. It's a process. It's never complete. But we've, we've really embarked on creating an international CI consent culture. How did we do this? How did we do it? We are going to reflect about the future in the past tense. We are going to reflect on the future in the past tense. How did we create this CI consent culture? So I'm going to put this in the, in the chat. We have created an international movement. Oops, I sent that to someone privately. That's a glitch in this. Okay. We have created an international movement that has shifted CI toward more of a culture of consent. How did we accomplish that? 20 to 30 of you, probably closer to 20, can raise your hands to volunteer to share one sentence aloud about the future in the past tense. For example, we had a consent culture symposium where 75 people met to learn together. That was the first thing we did. And then maybe the next person says, we created affinity groups that continue to meet for months to build relationships and develop best practices. Make sense? So use your imagination, use your intuition, follow your gut. You might raise your hand and already have an idea of what you want to say, but then depending on what the person right before you said, perhaps you'll have a different idea. Okay. So please raise your hand if you are interested in participating in this group visioning. 
And let's say Deirdre, Deirdre has her eye on the, the stack, is going to call on people. And when you have your name called, unmute, say your sentence, and then we'll all just take a moment to take that in. Deirdre will call on the next person. Brian says, can people post their sentence in the chat after they say it aloud? That's brilliant. Yes. I didn't realize I was so quick. My sentence, due to increasing discussion and teaching, we are able we were able to create a greater acknowledgement of power dynamics in a general way in society, which led to greater self-awareness and better acknowledging of one's effect on others. So my sentence is, we shared important questions and listen to each other's questions and responses. Hi, Alyssa. Um, we created a system for onboarding new people to our communities and our spaces in a way that they felt welcomed and clear about how to enter. We redefined contact as listening. The changes were mundane. They were changes in our everyday behavior, and it took the gifts of all of us to shift the culture. We developed a transformative justice process to respond to boundary crossings with the goal of keeping everyone in the community and educating offenders about why what they did was harmful in order to change the culture. Okay. Um... We facilitated healing groups for people from the dominant culture to work out their fragility privately so that they can be braver in the large group. In a large international group of like-minded folks, we created a shared structure that each individual then brought back to their home community and collaborated on with others, uh, reshaping the way that we contain our contact jams. Transformative justice became so intuitive that we didn't even need to have a separate group of people and nobody felt policed. We used consent practices to re-enter CI after COVID-19, creating new norms and widespread awareness around consent. Uh, we had some devil's advocates and um, uh, for a lack of a better word, transgressors uh, were uh, successfully rehabilitated and uh, they gave us from their improvements they gave back to the CI community. We collaborated with educators of all kinds to support children through ongoing CI pedagogy so that somatic and verbal communication skills could lead the way. We used the virtual knowledge gained during COVID to create virtual support networks for POCs and other marginalized groups and their allies in positions of leadership in CI um, that were actively creating and fostering inclusion we normalized response teams for consent incidents, but did such a fantastic job communicating our guidelines that we really needed to use them. Contact, improvisation, uh, jams gained a strong reputation as places to learn about and practice consent in dance and in the world at large. We created spaces and experiences for people to uh, recognize their socialized behaviors and mindsets that propagate harm and practiced and committed to ways to shift to sustainably joyful ways of being. We brought the principles unique to CI into the broader realm of feminism and activism. We created a richer and better informed and also more confident culture of CI pedagogy and teachers. Um, which ultimately grew a more capable, informed, and diverse group of community space holders and dancers. Excellent. That's our last person. Okay. 
So this is an example of a tool that you can bring back to your home CI community to help vision. Sometimes in groups that are stuck, it's difficult to imagine a way out. And starting from a place of imagining that you got your way out of the, the stuck spot and then working backwards can sometimes be a way to unwind or unweave the trouble. And also through this imagination, visualization practice, improvising together, we're, we're improvisers, improvising together can also enable groups to find solutions that one single individual could never find on their own. Okay, so we just did three activities together and we have a few minutes left in this session. So what I'd like to do is invite questions for me, for those of you who had a chance to watch my session. If you have questions for me about any of the material I offered or any questions for me about what we just did, please put your questions in the chat. And I think that Deirdre will be keeping an eye on the chat and then making some recommendations to me around what, what questions to answer. So it's difficult for me to look at all your faces and also look at the chat. So just take a moment to put any questions you might have for me. Great, here we go from uh, Megan. We have, um, I'm ready to dive into conversation about the question you pose. How do we address past transgressions? I brought that up in my, in my talk around the, the issue that communities building new, new guidelines and, and processes moving forward can sometimes forget that there has been past harm that needs to be, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I think that part, part of that for me has been, um, one tool has been the anonymous survey. So doing some research and gathering also, also non-anonymous surveys. So there are two kinds of surveys that I've done in my community. One was an anonymous survey where people could share issues that came up for them and then the organizers could look through and see what had arisen that we might not have been aware of. And then also following, following up with feedback that people had given to me non-anonymously. So remembering, oh, two years ago, somebody brought up a concern that we didn't have the systems in place to address at that time. And then following back up with them and saying, first of all, I apologize that we didn't have the, the capacity or the tools to address your, your grievance two years ago. And to ask the person what what would make what would make you feel well right now? What would make you feel able to come back to the community or able to step into the community and feel safe? So uh, I have another question for you, Nicole. Okay. Um, how to bring up consent topics if the leaders are saying that we don't need this topic and are unwilling to talk about it? So like as a participant, how to bring up consent topics when you feel like the leadership isn't, isn't on board? Is that? It doesn't say that explicitly, but I believe that's what they're saying. So in order for, in order for meaningful change to happen, the leadership, whoever's in leadership needs to be on board. And so if, if the leadership in a particular community is not on board with what certain participants feel is necessary for safety, and inclusion. There, is, there are some tools for grassroots organizing that can happen around building collective power. So starting to organize among, among peer participants to get numbers of people to sign on to some kind of ask, like not necessarily a formal petition, though that's, that's one route, but to really make a case that large numbers of people need a commitment to consent culture in order to continue. Um, and then there's also the other, the other option of organizing other events in tandem. So I think that sometimes there's, there's an idea that practitioners need to have a certain amount of experience as teachers in order to be organizers, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think that people who are even beginners 
can can organize events or to like work collaboratively with people of varying degrees of experience to organize events. And so if there's a kind of space that is not happening in your community that you want to see happen, you can also create that space, create a new jam, create a kind of lab environment, a, a monthly space where people convene and then share with those in leadership, like this is what we're doing. This is this is this is like something that we want to see and then invite them to participate and model for them the kind of leadership that you'd like to see. So those are two examples. Derek just said, or join the team of organizers, which is also a brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Um, so we have a question. How do you handle hostile resistance from indig individuals in dominant groups? And it's in reference to your video describing trainings given and white cis men approaching you in hostile ways or sharking. That was an example from the video. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. I really appreciate that question. I think the first few times that I had that experience, I was really shocked and I felt kind of triggered and traumatized. And then I started to anticipate it and I started to strategize around how I might address certain kinds of questions or provocations. And one of the ways that I, one of the tools that I've used is um, my crew, my friends, my people. Like I think that having allies, people who you trust, who you can actually talk candidly with about issues that arise, people you can bounce ideas off of with, is invaluable in this work. And so I have a number of people in CI all over the world who I can call or message and say, yo, this thing happened. Can I just bounce some ideas off of you? And so, you know, or I have this talk coming up. What are some things that you see that might arise, some challenges and help me talk through or even role play? So that's been really helpful for me is to through experience start to practice how to how to address and also how to like override those tendencies by just front loading a conversation with like i know that some people here are going to want to respond with some resistance and this is some ways that resistance might show up and i urge you to try to contain that so you can also just name it when you're facilitating i think that i want to close but i just I love these questions. And so I just want to say that, like, I love emails. You know, some people don't like getting, I just, I love emails. So just email me. Let's talk. Let's hang out. I just, I want this conversation to continue. So thank you yeah. all. So much. Yeah.